welcome to Friday nights with Emma. Hope everybody's staying warm. It is nasty out there. Well, it's cold. It's very cold, as you can see. Got my house gloves on, as usual. There's a link. And a link. Give everybody a minute to join. There you are. There you are. Just trying to keep my piecing in order. Diamond. Oh, hi, Shirley. Terry. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Christine from Berry Island. Oh, hi, Christine. Lorna. Margaret. Hi, Margaret. I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute. I'm, I've cut up all that lovely bright fabric that I showed you last week. Um, Joan. Oh, hi, Joan. Claudia. Hi, Claudia. Anne. Hi, Anne. Angie. Hi, Angie. Hello. Diana. Hi, Diana. Lorraine from Kent. Oh, hi, Lorraine. Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Christine from a cold white Glasgow. Oh, white. Yeah, we don't have the white stuff, which I'm quite glad of. But it is very cold. Very cold. Uh, Sandy. Sandy also says hello to Link. Oh, hi, Sandy. Judy, Happy New Year. Happy New hi, Year. Judy, happy New Year. Cheers. I have my Sauvignon tonight. But why not? And. Hi, Anne. So let me finish this bit. So I'm working on one of the bare paw blocks for my quilt for next Sunday, for a week from Sunday. Susan. Hi Susan. This is one of those blocks you have to sort of do in order because it's very easy to piece it together wrong or have some of the triangles be the wrong orientation. Don. Hi, Don. And Carol says, Happy New Year. You look well wrapped up. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. You're Sarah. Hi, Sarah. And Lorraine says, I'm glad I'm not the only one sewing with gloves and a scarf on. <laughs> yes. I I am um, teased. I, I, one of our postmen came to the door and he was wearing shorts this week. So I teased him for wearing shorts outside. And then he, in turn, teased me for wearing gloves inside. Jane. Hi, Jane. So, touche. So, I've got two of those done. I'll show you what I've been doing this week. So, remember last week I showed you the strip panel and the quilt as you go? Uh, Joanne and my Maureen. Oh, hi, Joanne. Uh, Happy Maureen. New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. This is the quilt as you go quilt that I made from that really like these colours. Actually, I was driving home tonight and a lot of these colours were actually in the sky with a grey, well, it's sort of a purpley grey, grey, and the clouds and the bit of the sky and then a bit of the sunset was all pinky and nice, so it was fitting. I sort of went in this week. Diamond says, best day of 2022 yet. Binge watch series three of A Discovery of Witches Ooh. doing EPP on the nice. sofa, cuddle up with the dog, take away this evening. Sounds and nice. Anne is watching. Sounds nice. Joanne says colors look lovely. Yeah, I love this one. That is really, I and really Debbie like also this agrees one. about the colors. Yeah, and it's all all gray on the back. <clears throat> I love that. And this is sort of, I think this is called ele elephant gray. I think it's elephant, but it's nice. It's a nice, if you, well, 
Michael will truly believe this, but if you can get a warm grey, which Michael finds grey comforting anyway, that's Michael I do. warm grey. Julie is watching. Oh, hey Julie. And then these are what I've prepared for the demonstration. So I've just, it's the same panel. Judith it's, is watching. Hi Judith. I've just used this, the colours in a different way. So you can really see that square pattern coming out in this one. Lorna says, I've been binge watching the Sewing Bee from oh. series one. Dawn loves it. Oh, nice. Well, I think Mum did that once when she went back and started watching the Sewing Bee all the way from the beginning. Oh, what was our... Anne says it's lovely. Oh, thank you. Um, we did the Great Pottery Throwdown last Sunday, so we're looking forward to that one this Sunday. There's too much on on a Sunday night. Oh, oh yeah, we did watch Midwife. We caught up on that later, didn't we? Yeah, so we have to watch Pottery Throwdown, and then we record the Midwife. And now we're going to record Green Planet, which I'm excited about as well. Um, yeah, all on a Sunday night. So, anyway, so that's the quilt as you go, all done. Now, what I'm working on here is this quilt so it's called Poor Tracks and it is all blocks of um, bare poor blocks which is a nice traditional one um, but they've made it really scrappy I don't know if you can see the photo on the back so inside the instructions it does tell you your yardage for if you want to make it out of them um, fat quarters or a layer cake or a charm pack pretty well i am 99 percent sure that um you're obviously going to have two charm packs or two layer cakes rather they call them charm packs but there they are the 10 inch layer cakes joan says have you seen the bbc program about songbirds it's lovely no oh, i think we missed that one. Oh. You have to look after that. And Geraldine says, Happy New Year, love your jumper. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we've had um, Mr. Blackbird coming for food over the last week or so, which I, I seem to think is a bit early for Mr. Blackbird, but he's been coming for his food already. So this is the one charm pack. I don't have. It's called The Wonder of Song. The oh, Wonder the... of Song. We'll have to look at it. That'd be nice. These are all the brights. So there's a bit rainbow, there's sushi, and there's sort of confetti, um, hundreds and thousands, uh, triangles, lollipops, ice lollies. Um, these are just a few, but they're all nice bright rainbow colours or fruits. Dawn says she loves the food fabric. It's nice. It's fun. And it's fun because I love, yeah, as you know me, I like to mix and match and put things together. Or oh, drinks. See there, drinks. So that's that one, which I had fun cutting up. <clears throat> Especially this week when it's been so grey. So I've got all my pieces all cut out for that. And <sighs> it's got link, link litterings. Uh, Jackie is watching. Oh, hi, Jackie. Um, we do see your... Um, Jackie says, I've been watching on the laptop, but it won't let me comment. Oh. So, Happy New Year to you both. Happy New Year. We do see it. So. Right, so I've got two, two of my paws done. I'll show you how I'm doing those. But you start off with half square triangles, which are made... Where I put them? Aha. Uh -huh. Here. In the way I... Well... Actually, I have to double check because I just sort of did it that way. Oh no, they do the um, the one line down the middle and then sew a quarter of an inch from either side. But I don't like to do that, you know me. So I've done my two lines to do my half square triangles. So I've got a few left to do of those. I've got a nice pile all done. I've got another pile yet to be 
cut apart. And then, okay, so it's my least favourite part of instructions. But then I, I laid these out against my squares and, and I thought, these squares are way too big. Did I cut something wrong? But then there's that sneaky little bit in the instructions where it says to trim these down to two and a half inches each. So even though that is not my favourite part, it, I have to admit it is coming out very accurate because of that. Um, so the points are matching very nicely. So there is something that it, it does make a difference. Um, I have ordered a two and a half inch square ruler because trimming them down to two and a half inches using a big ruler is a massive pain. So I have ordered that and it should come tomorrow from the Big River shop, as John says. Um, but why I am doing What's this... the Big River shop? A shop that's called after a Big River. You'll get there eventually. He'll get there eventually. Um, so for this block, you have to oh. pause. Yeah, see, there you go. The penny dropped. <laughs> um, yeah, so you have these, well, they look like paws in the corners. That's quite clever. Yeah, yeah. Oops, I do apologize. That's okay. And squishy, squishy. What is tricksy about this one is you have so two. Oh, I'm missing half of a triangle there. It'll turn up. You have to sew two half square triangles. Are you sure you? So that will be a pair, and that will be a pair. But you have to make sure that they are going in opposite directions. Because if you sew them all going the same direction, it isn't going to work. Which is why, I for this one in particular, I do lay them out and do my little method of pinning the side that I want to sew together. Christine says she uses the clearly perfect slotted trimmer, very accurate half square triangles. Ooh. I'll have to look out for that one. Sorry, let me speak with my pin in my mouth. But I will have will be trimming a lot of half square triangles tomorrow. So this is Riley Blake fabric, and I've got the ivory, it's ivory that is the background. Christine says, yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm not forgetting your lovely family. Oh, yeah, yeah. Margaret asked no link tonight. He is around. He, he wasn't was. earlier, but now he's, he's laying on his blankie. Yeah, he's with his blankie. what I might do to do the rest rather than lay out each block because it is going to be quite random is um, just so a set number of half square triangles going one way and then a set number going the other way and then lay them all out there we go so that's that one and that's going to need a square in the middle well I say in the middle it's in the corner there Perfect ass, you haven't contaminated it again by washing it. The oh, yeah, yeah. I did, I did wash it last week, one day. And um, he was a, just a lost soul all morning, waiting for his blankie to get finished. 
He was not happy. He even tried putting a substitute down that wasn't putting it. them but you can see how accurate those are coming up in the in the corners there and in the corner there so the trimming it does make a difference still not a fan but it will be making a big difference for the accuracy net is watching and wishes a happy new year is the middle bit so I've got a strip and a middle bit middle central square so. Christine asked I missed the beginning but what are you making please? I am making a bear paw block for my quilt, which I'll be demonstrating next. Well, it's not my quilt, it's not my pattern, but it's a um, quilt I'll be demonstrating on Sewing Street next week. And there'll be kits for making them. Uh, this is a Riley Blake layer cake with ivory background. And the other one, which I'll be demonstrating with, oh, sorry is another Riley Blake. I do love this one. It is called Summit Dusk. And you see all the all the fabrics on the back. There's not not to scale though because if I show you I do love this one. There's the dots. I love these colours that teal and that apricot the burgundy yeah these these um petals i guess they are aren't they look a lot bigger on the back than they actually are Got stripes my, my favorite one flowers and stripes is this one you can see the moths on it i do like the moths You see that one? Oh, lovely colour. Perfect colour. Lovely sort of minky grey and dusky pink. And a little bit of mustard in there and a little bit of teal. Yeah, these are going to be nice. And some dark. Again, they're they're brighter on camera than they are in real life. Okay, yeah, they're quite muted. I uh, see they're kind of... I'd say they're very 70s. You said last week they looked Victorian to you. Mm. 
Tom says, I love the colorway. I'm hoping to buy one. Yes. Buy that one. Uh, Elaine says that's her favorite colorway. And it's going to look really good against, because it's the same background. So if I put one of these on there, even the, the paler ones are going to be a nice contrast. It's going to be a lovely ivory background. Yeah. And Diamond suggests when you put a clean blankie down, just stuff it under your jumper for oh. a couple of minutes beforehand. He will feel less as though it's something different. Oh, that is true. Okay, I'll have to try that one because he just does not like having his blankie washed. But it's going to be done. It's literally black with fur by the time I get to wash it. Uh, Jeremy asks, what background color are you using with that one? This one, they're both ivory and it looks a lot whiter against the bright one and it looks a little bit more what's it, creamy against the, the other colorway but they're the same Diane is watching oh hi Diane right so I'm going to sew this onto here so I'm hoping I'll be able to get at least a few blocks done of the, the, the demonstration Colorway, so you'll be able to see what it looks like. Put it together. I can see this colorway being um, right up Cayley Street. Especially with the sushi on it. Mm. But your your quilt is a bear paw. It is. Karen is watching. Oh, sorry. Okay, Karen. Sorry, she's late. I have finished three whips today, so feeling quite smug. Oh, yeah, as you should be. Michael has no idea what those are. Work in progress? Yeah, well done. Yes, well. <laughs> you have a few of those. I do have street cred. That one's done, that one's done. This one, where did that sneaky half square triangle go? Might have to trim one. That really might go together. I can't even see it. Christian asks, is that your Star Trek quilt, that bear claw? No, it's it's a it's a green yeah, one. It's his green. We went in 2001 that one was made. Hmm. 2001. Simple times. 20 years ago. 21. Oh, snap. 21. It's old enough to drink. Don. <laughs> Don says... You I think you dropped it. Oh. Oh. Well spotted. <laughs> it is down there. It's right here. Thank you, Dawn. There we go. That's somebody's paying attention. Yeah, I think what I will do going forward is do a certain number going one way, a certain number going the other way, make up my paws, and then decide how to put them together into the blocks. That should be good and random then. Christine says uh, she recently bought a clothes defluffer. Oh. 
It looks like a small garden rake without the prongs. Oh. And I find it wonderful to get up cotton bits from the carpet. And I should imagine it would be great for pet hair. I think I've seen those. I think I've seen those advertised. And I have thought, hmm, that would be good. I've kind of just come to terms with the fact that I'm going to be forever covered in, in threads. That's just my life now. Diamond says, make sure you check your sewing machine at Sewing Street before your demo. Lots of gremlins lately. Oh, okay. Thanks. Good to know. I usually do try to at least um, sew, do a little test sew before I go on. Because I have learnt the, the hard way. Christine <laughs> says it's the best thing ever. Oh, okay. I'll have to, I have to um, get one of those. I only have to do 10 of these actually. I say that because it, there's a lot of um, what they call negative space. That's what the modern quilters call it. It's so areas of the quilt that don't have any piecing. Where's my. I am going to be making the lap quilt. So, oh, wait, the other thing I forgot to mention. So, this is going to have a baby size quilt, which has one, two, three, four, five, seven blocks in it. The lap quilt, which has ten. And then you have it for a bed size quilt as well. Now, let me see. Jernine says, don't forget you have a pen on your cuff. Oh. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Michael usually finds those. Um, <clears throat> I think the the kits you're going to be able to make a sorry <clears throat> a baby or a lap size quilt. Um, if you want to make the bed size quilt, you're going to need two layer cakes, two big charm packs, and more background. But if, when you get the kit, you'll have the pattern so you can redo it. Oh, I didn't see that. It's very exciting. So, what they have inside as well is I've got the layout in black and white. So you can get to work with your colouring pencils and colour them in so that you can actually design it before you sew it together. That's quite exciting. A quilting colouring book. Michael, what you did see behind the, behind the camera was Michael rolling his eyes like, oh, I would want to do that, but he doesn't know us very well. Actually, you could scan it in and do it on computer. <gasps> oh. With mm. paint or whatever. Uh, I think that might take work, but you could scan it in and print more off so you, or make a copy of it so you're not actually doing it on the actual pattern. Margaret asks if you like the picture of the Zimmer frame. Oh yes, <laughs> I did. I didn't show him. I, I I forgot to show Michael. Yeah, Margaret sent me a picture of um, a Zimmer frame as an at at. Or oh yeah, yeah yeah. Oh. Whatever, you, whatever you call them, I don't know. An at at is correct. It, oh my god. It also or is it an a t s t? Okay. 
I didn't realize all of them. Or is it an AT? AT, AT. Which one is it? Is it the big one or the small one? Big one. AT, AT. Christine says, would it be possible to advise on the quilting if you don't have a long arm machine, please? Say that again? Would it be possible to advise us on the quilting if you don't have a long arm machine? Oh, yeah. For which for which quilt, though? Because I am very much a, I'm an advocate of hand quilting. Because I, I haven't actually quilted any on the domestic machine. Unless it's a quilt as you go. Um, but I do very much like hand quilting. And I have to admit, my favourite quilt, which is my first quilt that I made for me, that I have on my bed, is all hand quilted. But it is, don't be afraid, it is not elaborate. I literally just um, hand quilted lines on it. I basically stitched in the ditch. On it because it's all squares. Christine says what you are doing now. Sorry? What you are doing now. Oh, what I'm doing now. Well, you know what? I was thinking about that um, yesterday or today. Yesterday. I was quitting it yesterday. And let me have a look. And I think if I was to do one, I think I would hang quilt it actually. And I'm trying to see what they've done on here. It looks like they have. It's kind of hard to see. It looks like they've done lines in the background. I'm trying. It almost looks like like an orange peel. If you know what that looks like. So it's um, curved. It looks like they've they've done curves in like an orange peel pattern. In the background but you know what I would do with this one because it's got such a lot of white in the back is I would probably just do uh, either um, lines um, what you call it diagonal lines diagonal the word I'm looking for diagonal lines going one way or do a cross hatch and do them one way and then do the other all over I think that would be very effective because you'd see it really well in the in the white space i think that's what i would do and that's really simple to do on your uh, machine christine says if hand quilting, hand quilting if hand quilting do you need a large frame and lolly says big stitch in quotations quilting covers large areas relatively quickly. yes you can do a very big stitch i tend to do small stitches only because that's what i started off doing um and so I find it, of course I find you get bigger now, but I find it easier to do small ones. Um, you can do like a canthus stitch, so it's quite a large stitch, or I don't know how you say it, sashiko? sashiko? One of those, stitching like that. So it's not necessarily with um, like hand quilting thread, but it is with more like Perle or embroidery floss, so you, the the stitches are more visible. I tend to do it with um, hand quilting thread. Gutman do a good hand hand quilting thread. Uh, it's stronger than normal cotton thread. It has to be cotton. Um, and a thimble and oh yes, frame. So the frame that I use and. I can actually show you next week. I'll do it next Friday, I'll show you. Um, is a plastic snap-on that the love of my life bought for me. Yes. <laughs> it was it's way superior to the one you used to have. Yes. I used to have a wooden, a traditional wooden hand quilting frame, which looks like an embroidery little wooden embroidery frame, only much, much bigger. <laughs> but it was hard to uh, maneuver the quilt around in it. So every time I wanted to move it and quilt in a different spot, the quilt had to undo the the big because I mean the the screw on it was about that long. I mean the frame was about that big. It was about that wide, so about a good inch, two inch deep, I would say. Um, but yeah, the frame is a lot easier. So it's 
basically a plastic pipe frame with um, bits that snap onto it so it's much easier to move the quilt around. Dawn says that thread is beautiful to sew with and Diamond is a bit, being a bit cheeky says who was he Emma? <laughs> Well, now everybody knows the love of my life is Gromit and Monk and Gromit and Ruby. Christine says, thank you. I will be interested to see a professional hand quilting. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that next week because I've got a project actually that I um, teach. I used to teach. It is always sort of partially quilted. So I can show you how I do it. I haven't hand quilted for a long time, but I really enjoy it actually. And the um, the finish on it remind me and I'll bring my quilt down and I can show you the difference between hand quilted although it has been washed quite a lot um, versus machine quilted. <laughs> Diamond says hardly cheeky he sounds like a good plumber well then that's definitely not me. I'm just sewing the two halves together now with the strip in the middle. Tony is watching. Oh, hi, Tony. So at least this will be uh, Maurice, more down. Marie says, okay. looking forward to the hand quilting. I bought the same frame, but still oh. can't master the okay. stitching. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll show you. It's literally practice, practice, practice. Because when I started, I mean, I, I look back at my stitches and they're not perfect. I'm on my very first quilt, and I literally quilted, hand quilted every quilt that I made because I, I couldn't do it on the machine. I didn't have my long arm then, so it was just, yeah, it was just over time, you just sort of get into the rhythm of it. Yardine says, this looks so pretty, and then you make it look oh, so thanks. easy. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Well, the one thing I will show you next week when I do demonstrate is the trickiest bit of this one is remembering to sew your half square triangles in opposite directions not all in the same way because that trips everybody up the amount of times that i have done that myself with this blog and had to spend quality time with jack but i'll do a few once i finish this quilt i'll do a few of the other colorway so you'll be able to see Oh, the other thing I was going to show you. This, this is a lap quilt that I'm making. But look at all the leftovers I've got. I've cut everything out that I need. Ignore the white because the white doesn't count. But this is everything that's left from the jelly rock, the um, layer cake. So I've got a few really good usable size strips. And then I've got some really big pieces. Jackie says, Squares. when you talk about the snap on the frame, I have lots of those, but the longest length is about 18 inches. Yeah, that's my, mine is about that size. It's about that size. It's about 17 inches square, I think. The one that I have. Um, I have it just over. So most blocks are about 12 inches. And I wanted it bigger than that, so that if I ever wanted to just do a cushion, then it would be big enough that I can just do the cushion in it. Oh yeah, these are all the bits I've got left. Terry says, I don't have enough strength in, uh, in arthritic fingers oh. for the snap frames. Um, Judy try... says, you can make a pineapple quilt with the leftovers. Yeah. I mean, there's so much, so much left over. 
So even if you make this quilt, and I'll tell you what size the lap quilt is. You were going to respond to Terry's comment though. Oh, but yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yes, and I'll and then I'll, I will I will address that because there's another way of doing it. Um. Oh. I was trying to see what size it makes. It doesn't say. It may say somewhere, but I can't see it. It's not obvious. Okay, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Anyway, yes, the arthritis. So, <clears throat> another way of doing hand quilting, and I personally can't get on with this, but like I say, there's no right or wrong way, only the way that works for you, is try it without a frame. So try quilting it. A lot of people I know quilt, a uh, hand quilt without a frame because they can actually manipulate the fabric or the, the quilt onto the needle easier. So you can actually get a lot more stitches um the other thing you might try is you can get little rubber bits or little rubber finger cots or what they call them to put on your fingers so that you can actually grip the the um needle easier or go for a bigger needle and a bigger thread so a thicker thread take bigger uh stitches more like a cancer type stitch than a small um traditional quilting stitch so just how would have a practice literally on maybe a 16 inch a square by 16 inches by 16 inches um just a sandwich top plain top um cotton wadding cotton polyester wadding or all cotton polyester wadding and then a plain back something that isn't too thick um Calico works really well, just for practice, and yeah, just have a go and see which way works best for you. Just, you know, try them all out. But yeah, and you can get, uh, obviously, gloves, like compression gloves to help with things as well. But yeah, anything like that. If you really want to try it, just have a, have a practice at lots of different ways. And things. Terry says thank you. I'll try that. Oh, you are. Yeah, uh, I really like hand quilting in front of the telly. That's what I used to do because I don't like to just sit and watch. Yes. Yes. And then I have to ask what's happened. Isn't that right, Mother? That is right, yes. Last night I was marking all my squares. go yeah so that's gonna be fun I like that nice bit of bright on these dreary days I'll give it a press I need to clean my iron because I did press it earlier and it left a horrible black mark on it oh dear dear I know all right so I'll have to give the iron a clean before I press it out properly. That's that. And then tomorrow I'll have fun trimming all my half triangles down. Mm. This really ought to say what size these are. Now come on. Oh, okay. I do see it now. It is obvious, but it wasn't obvious to begin with. So they're square. So the baby quilt is 46 inches square 
this lap quilt is 64 inches square which is quite big for a lap quilt actually depends the size of the lap true well links is definitely smaller than that and you liked that size for just going over your lap on the yes on the that's chair. true yes so you did like the smaller yeah. one uh, and then the bed size quilt is 80 inches square so that would easily do a double size bed uh, Christine says that's pretty and Annette says she's just started doing EPP. Mm. Any ideas for good thimbles please? Oh, I think it is another sort of, you have to find the one that works for you. So this is one that I have had when I used to have nails, when Sarah used to give me pretty nails but I don't anymore. So if you have long nails, this one worked really well, except I had to put something in the back to pad it out because this metal bit was a bit annoying on my finger, but it is very adjustable. But I used to put a little piece of cotton wadding underneath there to pad it out. I think it's been through the washing machine in my jeans pocket, so it's, it's a bit deformed. Tony says uh, sticky dots. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got you can get sticky darts, you can get leather ones. Um, this one I quite liked because it has the little holes. So you, one thing you do have to make sure is that you get something that you can really hold your um, needle against. Let me go grab the one that I use the most. If I can find it. Be right back. Momentito. can't find it, Link might have had it, but the one that I usually have, it's a silver one, just goes over the tip of your finger, I think it's clover, but you have to make sure if you're getting one that goes over the top of your finger, uh, and this is the finger that I, I put it on, is my middle finger, um, on the very top it should have a, a little indent, like a, a well, uh, a ridge all the way around the top, so that you can... Um, so that basically the top of your the end of your needle doesn't slip off the end so it, it has something to rest against if you get one that is just completely domed then i find the needle just sort of skitters off the edge so you need to make sure about that but yeah it is definitely just a case of trying and finding and finding the right size as well so i'm a medium but if you've got pretty small fingers, you might want to go a little bit smaller because there's nothing worse than having a loose thimble and then it falling off at every moment you put your finger down. But I'll go over that next week. I'll show you what I use. Uh, but it's definitely a case of finding the one that works best for you. Claudia says, um, uh, for the arthritis, I, ha I hand quilted my last quilt for her son and his wife. I couldn't get on the hoops, and in the end, I used a cotton pearl eight, oh, yeah, yeah, pearl eight. and got uh, much better than with that. The hands need a bit of rest every so often. Hope that helps. And Christine says, "Is that pins?" And Diamond says, "If you sew away from yourself, you don't need a thimble. Mm. EPP lends itself well to that method, but not applique." Oh, okay. Well, I find I have definitely have to have a thimble in order to push the needles through the fabric. Um, if I don't use a thimble when I'm pushing my needle, um, basically it works a hole in your finger and it's not. I mean, I even, I did a little bit of hand sewing this week. I can't remember what for. And that says, thank you for everyone for help. Oh. No, I cut chunky fingers. I left all without. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, then you might want a medium or a large or find something that is adjustable. They also make um, rubber or silicone, they're more like silicone um, thimbles. The, the, the skirt bit is made out of silicone and then the top part is just metal when it has that ridge on it as well, like I mentioned. So yeah, so it's just a case of, of trying and seeing what works best that you like. 
time is it? Looks like it's a bit early. It's dark, dark. It is dark, dark. It's going to be dark, dark for a little while. But, but that's it. That's it for tonight. And then I will, next Friday, we'll do the hand quilting. Um, and we'll talk thimbles and hoops and threads and needles and all of that sort of thing. But yeah. I've got a lot of trimming to do tomorrow. <laughs> Claudia asks, have you been working on your coat? Would be good in this weather. <laughs> no. That's you realize that started a year ago. It would have been done if it wasn't for the hand piecing mm. on the back. Mm. It's the hand piecing that's that's taking yeah, the time. And I because I never have time. Fair I don't play. have time to work fair on my play. own stuff. Yes, indeed. Fair it's play. All, I'm it's on just a good natured ribbing. Uh, Linda says masking tape can be a good substitute for a thimble. Oh. Just something to protect your finger when you're pushing your needle through or everything. Yeah. Like I said, you can get leather ones, little silicone bits. Because people don't, some people don't like having the thimble on the end of their finger. Yeah. Just whatever works. Plasters. Sometimes can work. But yeah. So we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining. Uh, I guess this is our first, yeah, this is our first Friday night of the New Year, isn't it? Because last week it wasn't New Year, was it? It was New Year's Eve. I don't know. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know. Assume me Christmas. <laughs> 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 anyway, thanks for joining, and uh, I'll see you next week. Good Bye -bye. night. Good night, all. <laughs>